This video, uh, number 15, is a little bit of an extension of video 14, where I talked about the School of the Prophets uh, and uh, the endowment, the presentation of the endowment in the Kirtland Temple. If you haven't yet watched that video, uh, I might recommend that you do so because it will help contextualize some of the things I'm going to talk about in this video, focusing in on the Word of Wisdom as a whole. I hate to burst your bubble. I'm not going to sit here and give a stereotypical uh, uh, Word of Wisdom um, lesson, and I don't mean that to be uh, pejorative or condescending. Uh, I don't want to sit there and tell you whether, you know, this herbal tea or mate or, or getting into how much meat is too much meat uh, is is in excess and times of winter and hunger and famine. Uh, I will leave that up to you in your own personal decision and agency to judge those things. I want to talk about broader principles, particularly in the context of the School of the Prophets um, and the history of what's going on here, to maybe help you as you make your own decisions uh, to work with God through your own agency to know how to apply and live the Word of Wisdom, something that is fundamental to, uh, has become fundamental to the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. It's a very defining thing for us. So, one of the reasons why I want to take this approach with you is because uh, to understand the Word of Wisdom, uh, hopefully, maybe in a way that uh, often isn't presented, I like when Joseph Smith says that he has a key by which he understands the parables of Jesus. He says, the key is, I ask myself, what was the question that drew the parable? Well, I actually have a key, using Joseph's teaching there, I have a key by which I understand the revelations of Joseph Smith. The key I ask myself is, what was the circumstance that drew the revelation, or what was the context that drew the revelation? That's really important with the Word of Wisdom, because the Word of Wisdom comes in the context of the School of the Prophets. That's why I told you to watch the previous video. Uh, Joseph is trying to help a group of people to achieve endowment, to learn how to become sanctified and pure and holy, and to come into the presence of God. The thing on Joseph Smith's mind is not how can I make people more healthy. The thing on Joseph Smith's mind is how can I make people more holy, and if we understand that, we'll start to unlock and have a key to grasp what the Word of Wisdom might be getting at. So, what I want to get back to with you as the revelation ends, so we have the introduction, the, the don'ts, the do's, and then there's some promises at the end. A general principle of the Word of Wisdom, again, it's coming in the context of endowment, is trying to teach us how to live a life that is disciplined, how to live a life that is uh, avoiding uh, harmful addictions that take control of our life, how to live a life so that we have clarity of mind and so that we don't have impaired judgment as a whole. Maybe right here it's appropriate to tell you a personal story. Um, I one time was attending an academic conference out in the south of the United States of America. Uh, in the south, uh, they drink a lot of iced tea, the good sweet tea. We sat down for a lunch at this academic convention. There's literally thousands of of professors and PhD holders there, and, and I sat down and I had on a BYU shirt, and uh, uh, we sit, I sat at a table with, I think there was 10 people seated at these round tables, and I didn't know the people, they didn't know me, and we start chatting and making small talk, and they see the Y on my shirt, and they say, oh, are you, are you from Yale? <laughs> and I said, no, that's, that, that Y is uh, Brigham Young University. And you know the next question. They said, oh, are, are you a Mormon? And I said, no, I'm a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latin. No, I didn't say that. I said, yes, I am. And, um, what was interesting is, as the discussion started, everybody had already been served their sweet tea and their sweet tea and water sitting on the, or, or iced tea on the table. And uh, um, I wasn't drinking mine. I was only drinking the water. And Right after I said, I'm a Mormon, somebody said, is that why you're not drinking your tea? Do Mormons not drink tea? And I said, yeah, we, uh, we don't. Uh, as part of our faith, we don't drink tea. And you know the next question. They said, why? Why? And it's interesting, the whole table turned and started looking and, and talking with me, and I had a fascinating discussion with them. And the reason why I share that with you, if I had tried to frame, and this is where sometimes we dig ourselves into holes a little bit or paint ourselves into corners, 
if I had tried to only frame the word of wisdom as a health thing, well, then we, with a bunch of academics, we would have got into spinning different health studies. Well, one health study shows that a little bit of, a little bit of wine every day is good for you. This health study shows that coffee can do these things for your nerves. This health study shows that tea, we didn't get into that, though, um, and I'm glad we didn't. All I said to them was something like uh, this, as best as I can recollect. I said, um, our founding prophet, Joseph Smith, we believe he received revelation from God, trying to help us learn how to develop self-discipline and to learn how to set us apart from the world. Uh, um, or from common things that are in society. And I said, so we don't drink things like tea or coffee. We don't drink alcohol. We also don't smoke or chew tobacco. And I said, and those things are just common everywhere in society. And the reason why we don't drink them or consume them is because we believe that they help us to develop self-discipline. They help us to show that we are dedicated to God that we're willing to choose him other over common, other common things in the world. And we believe that if we show that sort of, sort of dedication and discipline to God, that it will bless us in our spiritual lives and, the, and that God will bless us uh, with his spirit. And when I said that, uh, or something like that, as best as I can recollect, that's not word for word, but and when I said something like that, the people next to me said, oh, that makes sense. I appreciate you explaining that. Um, and, and we had a great uh, interaction. So the reason why I share that story is so that we can see the Word of Wisdom, hopefully in that broader context of Joseph trying to help the members of the School of the Prophets to achieve endowment. Yes, I know historically there was the temperance movement. Joseph had seen the effects of hard uh, whiskey. He had seen drunkenness and so had people in his society. That surely was on his mind. But the major thing on his mind was, how do I help people to become ded dedicated to God, disciplined, sanctified, pure? And this was a revelation that would help in that. Uh, it would also would help them physically. That is definitely part of it. So let's conclude by looking at these blessings in verses 18 to 21. What I want you to notice in these blessings is that one blessing will be physical, but then another blessing will be spiritual. Physical, spiritual. Look at verse 18. All saints who remember to keep and do these sayings, walking in obedience to the commandments. Again, obedience, learning these things. Shall receive health in their navel and marrow in their bones. Health, physical. Now spiritual, 19. And shall find wisdom and great treasures of knowledge, even hidden treasures, the things of God, spiritual. Back to physical in 20. And shall run and not be weary, and shall walk and not faint. And now spiritual. And I, the Lord, give unto them a promise, verse 21, that the destroying angel shall pass by them as the children of Israel and not slay them. Amen. I want to end on that last line. It's curious. Is the destroying angel an evil angel or is it an angel from God? It seems to be sent from God. And it's likely hearkening, that phrase is hearkening to Moses and the children of Israel in Egypt. Remember, how were they designated as covenant Israel as the children of Israel. Well, they took a lamb, shed its blood, marked it on the lintel and dole, uh, posts of the door, and the destroying angel passed by them because they recognized them as, oh, those are God's children. Therefore, they'll be saved. That's God's Israel. The word of wisdom, I want you to understand this, acts to mark us as covenant Israel. It is one of the outward indicators, um, just like blood on a doorpost. Uh, coffee, tea, alcohol, tobacco, those things are ubiquitous in every society. I don't care where we go on this beautiful uh, earth. Whatever society we're in, those things will be common. So the moment we say, I don't drink coffee or tea, I don't consume alcohol or tobacco, it marks us as peculiar. It marks us as a little different. It marks us as somebody who is set apart from the world. Now, I, I'm no medical physician. I trust doctors. I trust academics. I trust um, uh, all those things that are out there, but I really trust God and what he has revealed on this. I don't know, by the way, if coffee or tea 
uh, is or isn't ultimately good or bad for your body. But I do know that if God, by the and just like how I don't know with Moses, the Lord said, "Don't eat shellfish, um, don't eat uh, shrimp, don't eat pork, things from pigs." Today we eat pork and we eat shrimp and shellfish. Does that mean that we're wicked or harming our bodies or, or unclean, to use a mosaic term? No, because that's not part of the law. God seems to have chosen some common things in our society to make it part of his law to say, will you set yourself apart from that? And that if you and I will set ourselves apart from that, God will mark us as uh, covenant uh, uh, Israel. I end this video by sharing my testimony that the word of wisdom will not only bless you and me physically because God has marked it to bless us physically and spiritually, but it will it'll bless us spiritually too. And not only will help us be healthier, which I believe, but it will also, more importantly, uh, perhaps help us be holier. And not only will help us to enjoy uh, a better life, clarity of mind, a lack of addictive substances, but it will also help us to enjoy endowment where we know because of our covenant commitment, our discipline to God, our rejection of the things of the world, how to come into his presence and have his power with us in our daily life. God bless you and God bless me as we strive our very best to live these wonderful divine teachings and revelations that unfolded to Joseph Smith line upon line and precept upon precept in the unfolding restoration.